Hey Sens fans, welcome to another of my videos and uh, we're going to talk about this past season. So, this past season just finished and uh, generally speaking, even though the Senators had an overall losing record, uh, the end of the season with a record of 23, 28 and 5, uh, which brought them to 23rd in the NHL, it was actually, I feel, still a pretty successful season, mostly because you saw a lot of improvement, which is of course what we're looking for. Um, the Senators last year were pretty much last in the league. I think we were second last only to Detroit. Uh, so this year, uh, the Senators were 23rd. I mean, you saw there's about seven or eight teams that were actually worse than we are. And uh, we're definitely heading in the right direction. Now, as the season went on, uh, the Senators actually started really poorly. You might remember they started the season, in the first half of the season, 9, 18, and 1. And that was the record at the halfway point. In fact, at the 10 game mark, Ottawa was 1, 8, and 1. So they were looking completely awful. And this was starting to look like, oh my god, this is going to be a total write-off. Uh, the Senators just got thrashed in one game against Vancouver, uh, 7 to 1. And it just looked like, oh, why even bother at this point? Uh, but the young guns really came forward. The Senators kind of gelled as a team. And uh, as the season went on, they got better and better and better. And in the last half of the season, Ottawa's record, 14, 10, and 4. That's a pretty good record. That is the type of record where you could potentially challenge for a playoff spot. So if you look at how the Ottawa Senators played in the second half of the season, and you translate that to a full season, very possibly the Senators could challenge for a playoff spot next season. And of course... All their core players are still very young and getting better. So uh, I, in future videos, I will take a more in-depth look at some of the individual talent. Uh, I think if I talk too much in this video, it's going to go on for like half an hour. And I just really want to give a general idea of what's going on. But as the season ended, this is sort of what the team looks like. Uh, so one of the most notable things is Josh Norris. Uh, Josh Norris, fantastic rookie season. I think he's going to challenge for the Calder Trophy, although he's probably not going to win. I think Kaprizov is the one that's going to win. But Norris put forth a really good rookie season. And right now, I have him penciled in as our number one center. He's past Chris Tierney as the number one center. And Tierney's been, you know, was kind of average this season. Um, but if we just look kind of player by player, uh, Brady Kachuk, just a fantastic season. Uh, he's all over the place. He's a gigantic wrecking ball when he plays. Just just an amazing player. And it's now officially time that the Senators make Brady Kachuk the official team captain. There's no reason to wait. He is the leader. When another team thinks Ottawa Senators, the first name that comes to mind is Brady Kachuk. So he is our best player. Um... Our MVP, possibly, although you could certainly make a case that Thomas Shabbat was our MVP, because, I mean, Shabbat's definitely a workhorse. He plays half the game, and he, he's the anchor on defense. But between Shabbat and Norris, those are our two best players. Uh, and uh, Kachuk is, is just a stud at this point. And then, of course, you go down to the next guy, Tim Stutzla. I mean, what an incredible rookie season. Uh, 18 years old. Actually played better than Alexis Lafreniere. So, I mean, all the hype was about Lafreniere. Stutzla played better than Lafreniere. So, he was a really good player, and uh, down the line, he's probably going to be a 70-point guy. I think down the line, Stutzla is going to be our best offensive player. Probably, you know, 70 points a season. That being said, Kachuk, I think, is still going to be overall our best player. I don't think Kachuk is going to put as many points as Stutzla, but Kachuk just brings a little bit more to the table, more physicality, more leadership. So that's where Kachuk kind of becomes the franchise player. Uh, but anyways, you know, Nick Paul had a really good season. They brought in Dezingle, you know, kind of now on the fourth line. Uh, like I already mentioned, Norris, probably our best rookie. And, uh, you know, it was obviously between Norris and Stutzla, but... Norris was a little bit better, but he's also three years older than Stutzla, so you have to remember that. And uh, I still get a chuckle knowing that we got both Norris and Stutzla for Eric Carlson. And, you know, Carlson, you know, he had kind of an average season in San Jose, and from what I've heard, 
Uh, he doesn't seem to be very happy there, and the rumors are that he wants out. Uh, although nobody is going to take on that contract, because the contract the, Swift, the Sharks gave him, $92.5 million over, what was it, eight years, just completely ridiculous. One of the NHL's mo most overpaid players. And the fact that we got Stutzla and Norris, among others, for Carlson is at this point kind of laughable. Uh, Colin White kind of played ordinary. He's a third-line center. Here I have Anisimov rated as our fourth center. You could certainly make Derek Stepan the fourth center. It's really a, a coin toss between Anisimov and Stepan. And both players at this point are free agents. Are they going to come back? You know, if I was the Senators, I would try to bring back one of them anyways. I wouldn't bring them both back. I don't think there's any point. But I would say, do you want to bring back Stefan or do you want to bring back Anis Anisimov? At this point, it's coin toss. Maybe Stefan, but it's going to come down to money. Like, who's willing to maybe make a little bit less money? Uh, I would only offer maybe about seven hundred grand for one season, though. And if neither of the players comes back... It's not a big deal because you have really good prospect in Shane Pinto. I mean, Shane Pinto really showed down the line. I think he had seven points in 12 games, and he looked pretty good. I would like to put Pinto at least one season in the AHL, but he has shown that he could play at this level if they don't have anybody else. If Anisimov and uh, Stepan aren't coming back, yeah, I, I don't see any problem putting Pinto in that fourth spot. Uh, Dezingle, by the way, also a free agent. I hope the Senators are going to re-sign him, but again, it has to be as long as the money is rational. Um, I think a single, maybe at the most, one, maybe one and a half million. I wouldn't give him more than that, though. Uh, Connor Brown, I mean, what a surprise he was. You know, statistically speaking, I know everybody says Kachuk's our MVP, but Connor Brown had 35 points. Kachuk had 36, so there's only one point difference. But Connor Brown led this team in goals, had 21 goals, and he actually had a plus one rating. Now, I don't know how much emphasis you guys put in plus minus, but a plus one and Brady Kachuk had a minus 17. That's a pretty big difference, plus one versus minus 17. Based on the numbers, you could maybe say Connor Brown was just as good. But, you know, he's not as physical as Kachuk. He doesn't bring back those intangibles. But what a fantastic... I mean, it was, really was a career season for Connor Brown. And he went right up to being our top number one right winger. Drake Batherson, I think 17 goals. Really talented guy. Down the line, I think Batherson's going to be a 30-goal scorer. And that could be as soon as next season. Uh, then we have Evgeny Dadanov. I honestly will say that Dadanov was probably our most disappointing player. You know, he was our big free agent. We gave him $15 million for three years. We had this expectation that he would potentially be our best offensive player, but he was pretty inconsistent and didn't really produce nearly the offense that we thought he would. So at this point, I think it's fair to say he has been our most disappointing player. And considering he's 32 years old, I don't think he's going to get better. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about Dadanov in a future video. And Austin Watson played really well. Just, you know, I find Watson and Kachuk are basically the same type of player in the fact that they're kind of like wrecking balls out there. They love to get there physically. Uh, but the difference is that Watson just doesn't have the same offensive flair that Kachuk does. You just, he has the physicality, but he just doesn't score. Uh, but as a fourth line player, very good. Uh, Shabbat was playing half the games. He's a machine out there. Uh, and potentially, maybe, our MVP. Uh, Eric Branstrom, on pace for 30 points, uh, if this had been a full season. So, yeah, it's, uh, he's definitely made the team full-time now. Artem Zub, fantastic rookie. Just looked really poised out there. And the Senators did the right thing. They signed this guy, I think, for another two years now. And that's good because he's really a really solid two-way defenseman. And I think a good compliment for guys like Shabbat and Brandstrom, who are a little bit more offensive flared. I think you put Zub and Shabbat on the same line. I think Shabbat plays with more confidence because he knows if he does a rush, same thing with Brandstrom, maybe they get caught out of position. They know Zub is going to be back there to help them out. Uh, but Zaitsev played really well. 
Josh Brown, well, Josh Brown was just kind of plugging along. Uh, and of course, this brings us to the goaltenders, uh, Matt Murray and Marcus Hogberg. I think Murray played decent. He wasn't spectacular. But of course, the big story was this rotation of goaltenders that we had, um, where we had like so many goaltenders coming in. So Hogberg gets hurt while Matt Murray also got hurt. So we had to bring in Joy Decord. We had to bring in Philip Gustafsson. Um, we had to bring in Anton Forsberg. So just a lot of goaltenders to play around here. And so that was kind of a big story. And kind of wondering, you know, the Senators, if Matt Murray had stayed healthy the whole season, yeah, they probably would have had a better record. Uh, but anyways, that was just a very quick rundown of what's going on. Uh, mostly in the offseason, I'm a little bit interested to see, are the Senators going to re-sign to Zingle? Are they going to try to bring back Anisimov? Or Derek Stepp. And like I said, I think they should try to bring one of them back. But we'll see, as long as the money's reasonable. And uh, for the most part, I think you keep this team pretty much together. And this could be a winning team. Um, like they showed in the second half of the season. You know, 14-10-4 is a pretty good record. And they could definitely maintain that record over the course of 80 games. They are a young team. Uh, they brought in Victor Mete, who's you know, 22 years old. So definitely the youth movement is there. The young players are really starting to develop. And what's scary is that guys like Kachuk and Stufla and Norris and Batherson and Brandstrom, uh, these guys are just going to get better and better and better until they're, like, they're superstars. So that was my little rundown. Good season, even though in the end they still had a losing record. But... Especially in the second half, once they got their chemistry together, they showed they could really play with pretty much anybody, except maybe the Edmonton Oilers. That's a different story. Uh, but generally, I have to give this this season for me this the season rates. I would give it a B minus because yeah, they had that losing record, they had that rough start, but they had a really good finish. And of course, last year I would have given them a C minus. Uh, so yeah, this this was definitely an improvement. We're definitely looking forward to what the Senators are going to do in the offseason, what's going to happen at the draft, what they're going to do about free agents. And uh, that's pretty much it for what I have now. But I will make other videos where I'm going to talk more in depth about guys like Stutzla, about Kachuk, and about where I think this team is going and what they should do to improve. And uh, you know what? I hope you're going to be with me on those journeys. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. And I'll see you next time.